Alright, what's going on guys? It's Flame, and welcome back to another video. This is a little bit different. I am not on any video game right now, which is something definitely, uh, you know, irregular on my channel, per se. But yesterday's video, I mentioned that it was my 99th Modern Warfare video, and uh, for the 100th video, I wanted to do something special. And I actually came up with a pretty cool idea, I think, uh, right after I finished that video. So in today's video, we're going to be... To, like ranking all the weapons within modern warfare now keep in mind that this is completely opinion based i'm going to be taking into account like statistics per se a little bit but overall it's just opinion based so don't yell at me in the comments or anything uh if you think i'm wrong on anything just instead put in the comment section below what you'd change and why i'd really like to see that uh and you might even change my mind on some stuff and i'd really appreciate that um also keep in mind that I've been playing this game basically non-stop since it came out. I have like 17 days played. Uh, I'm on the leaderboard on PC for kills. You know, I unlocked Damascus, so I've used every weapon a pretty good amount. Like I have, uh, you know, 500 to 1,000 kills with pretty much every single weapon. So I, I think I know at least a decent amount of what I'm talking about. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Also... Um, I'm going to be taking into account, uh, both what the gun was like when it, when the game first released, or if it's a DLC weapon, when it came out, and also what it's like now, so that way I can take into account, you know, the buffs and, or nerfs, um, and just kind of try and place it accurately at where it belongs, um, based as it's, as a gun overall for the entire year. Um, so... Without further ado, let's start. So we've got the 1911 pistol right here. Um, honestly, a lot of the pistols in this game feel very similar, uh, excluding the revolver or the deagle, obviously, because uh, those are a little bit different. But the, the spammy pistols, they kind of feel the same. Um, pistols aren't great in this game, at least these kind of pistols. Uh, they're not bad. So I'm going to just give it a good and uh yeah it's it's just these pistols they're i mean if you're using them in hardcore then they're you know good because you can actually like one tap people um so they're fun in hardcore in core not very practical you're way better off using one of these full auto guns that are very overpowered so yeah next we've got the uh 0.357 I believe is the actual name of the gun, but I just call it the revolver uh, And I'm sure a lot of people also call it the revolver. All right, my apologies There were some uh, lawn mowers in the background and stuff and they might pop up again uh, Hopefully it's not too loud in the recording, but yeah, we got the 357 or the revolver Now you could look at this two ways one you could look at the revolver itself or two You could look at snake shot. So basically snake shot was pretty stupid broken uh, when the game first came out it got nerfed uh, I think like a couple months ago at this point uh, it's still good snake shot um, the regular 357 I don't find it really practical because you can still kind of hit marker people and stuff uh, at certain parts of the body and certain ranges um, and it just it's really slow so it doesn't really feel like it's worth it to use it um, but the snake shot, you know what? I'm gonna just put it at good. I think if it if the snake shot didn't get nerfed, it would be at very good. But I'm gonna just put it at good. All right, now we got the deagle. So I would argue that the deagle is probably the best pistol in this game, just all around. It has good damage. You can make it have good range, good ammo capacity. It doesn't shoot too slowly. Like I think it shoots faster than the revolver. Uh, it's probably pretty close, but. I think that the Deagle is probably better. The Akimbo Deagles suck, though. I'm going to be honest with you. If you haven't used them, the the spread on the bullets is, like, so far. It's, like, 180 degrees or something stupid. That's an exaggeration, but you understand what I mean. But overall, if you're just using the regular Deagle, it's pretty uh, viable. You could do good in, in core with it and in hardcore. Yeah, yeah it's pretty good. So I'm going to put it at very good. I think it's probably the only pistol deserving of that spot. Alright, so next we've got the 725. Now, this is a pretty funny one. 
If you were here when the game first came out, then you know just how stupid broken this thing was. Like, this thing was basically ruining the entire game for like the first month or two. It was so overpowered, you could cross map people without slug rounds or anything, keep in mind. You could cross map people with this stupid thing, uh, and it was still really good up close. It was still very viable for both an actual range that a shotgun should be good, and also super long ranges. So it was kind of like, at that point, it was like, what's the point of carrying an AR, even though they're extremely good? If I can just use a shotgun for close range to uh, deal with those close quarter situations in buildings or something, medium range, because it can, long range, because it can, like, just why not, you know? And it was plaguing the entire game. But uh, it got nerfed two or three times. Uh, it's still good right now. Like, you still see a decent amount of people using it. Uh, I don't know if that's because they're doing challenges or what. But I'm going to still put this thing at godly. Uh, and the reasoning behind that is because for the first one or two months, it could arguably con be considered uh, in that pool of guns that are just known as being overpowered in, like, like completely busted in, like, all Call of Duties. So, like couple years in the future and a new cod game we're gonna be looking back hey you remember the 725 when modern warfare came out that shit was busted because it was and it's still good so uh yeah that's 725 next we've got the ak-47 now the ak-47 it's it's not that it's actually not that good in this game i'm gonna be honest it shoots pretty slowly um, all the ARs are really good in this game, don't get me wrong, because the time to kill is just so fast that ARs just dominate pretty much any range. Um, so, I would say that the AK is one of the lower end assault rifles. The iron sights are not very good. It has a lot of kick to it, like a lot of recoil. Um, it's just, eh. So, I'm gonna put it at probably good. It did get a, like, you can use that conversion kit to give it SMG rounds um, for the, like, AK-74U, which is how you convert it into that. Uh, that got a buff, so at, at least that's, like, decent now. But still, uh, the way I see it, I don't know why you'd use an AK if you can use the guns like the Kilo, the M4, even, like, the, you know, FAL is good. Like, just the, there's a bunch of ARs that outclass it, in my opinion. But next we've got the AUG SMG. Uh, this is kind of a similar story to the AK-47 in my opinion. It's kind of one of the lower end SMGs. It, it is uh, like somewhat versatile if you think about it because you can convert it to those AR rounds which makes it a little bit more uh, yeah, viable or versatile or however you want to say it. Um, so it's not a bad gun. I'm going to put it at good as well. I think that's where it deserves to be. It's about on par with the AK, just the SMG version of it per se. But yeah. Alright, next we've got the AX50. Uh, Y'all know I've used this a bunch. I'm a sniper, so I, I use the snipers a lot in this game. I've used everything a decent amount for sure, but especially the snipers. The AX50 is kind of old reliable in terms of this game. Um, it It's... It's good in Warzone, but I'm not really talking Warzone here. We're talking multiplayer. Um, here's the thing. The snipers aren't the best in this game. Everyone knows that. With the super fast time to kill, the way that the radar works, camping, all that stuff, snipers just get outperformed at long range even by ARs. Now, the AX-50, um, it's kind of meant to fill that middle role, like kind of in between the CAR-98 and the HDR. HDR is meant to do more damage and have more range than the AX-50, but the trade-off is the HDR is slower, whereas the CAR-98 is faster, but does less damage, and you get more hit markers. So, the AX-50 basically hasn't really been touched um, in terms of buffs or nerfs during the entire year, uh, other than like that one uh, sniper buff patch that we got recently, but I, I think it was just a little bit of damage range. So, again... Uh, I think you're, in terms of multiplayer speaking, you're way better off with the CAR-98 or the uh, MK2 carbine. So I'm going to just put it at good. Um, 
there are definitely better options in terms of snipers but uh it's still good like it's not like it's it's bad all right so now we've got the knife this is an interesting one actually so the knife basically uh in this game usually knifing has a bunch of lunge to it um and that's usually what makes it actually somewhat viable um but in this game with the fast time to kill so if you're running at someone and they see you um and they're able to shoot you before you get close enough then you're gonna get beamed and just completely destroyed so i i i don't really think like the the knifing the lunge on knives in this game is not good so i'm gonna put knife at not great to be honest because unless you're in a really small map or you're just really good at maneuvering in those uh you know small locations where you can actually get to people before they notice you and are able to kill you with the fast time to kill then it's just it it's difficult it, it's not really rewarding that, that's just kind of the way that, that that's kind of the nature of knifing within this game um all right next we've got the cr56 a max or the galil um this came out recently i've used it a decent amount i always use these guns and max them out at the start of the season like the dlc weapons and the way i see it um the galil is just a slightly better version of the ak-47 all right those lawnmowers are still around but uh the way i see it the galil is just a slightly better version of the ak-47 it's kind of designed to fill the same role in terms of assault rifles you know those ones that are high power kind of uh slower shooting heavier kind of assault rifles but i think it's just it does an all around a better job at what it's supposed to do than the ak-47 so i'm gonna put it at very good now that is the the only reason that it's very good and not good is because the ak-47 is good and i believe it it needs to it, it's supposed to be above the ak-47 uh in that regard all right next we've got the crossbow so this is an interesting one uh this was one of the first dlc weapons added to modern warfare i believe it was the mid uh season one update that that, that we uh got this added to the game and originally it was kind of not very good the whole point of the crossbow is really to just get some variety and just have some fun with the game usually it's not really meant to be one of those practical weapons uh, it did get a buff actually at one point or maybe a couple buffs. I don't even remember um, But it's still not very good because you're just gonna end up getting it outclassed by practically any um, assault rifle where it, It's kind of slow and even if you ADS and you shoot the delay Being a crossbow the delay of the bolt actually firing uh, Versus when it hits the target they can kill you in that time in most scenarios so you're just going to end up trading a lot or losing fights. Uh, and it's not really worth it, honestly. So I'm going to put it at not great. But, you know, if you're looking for something to get a little variety and have a little fun, the crossbow is definitely good for that. Alright, next we've got the Dragonov. Now, the Dragonov is... It's alright. Um... I would have put it at probably good, but with the uh, Rytec AMR or the Barrett 50 cal getting added to the game, it's just the Barrett makes it so that what is the point of using the Dragonov if there's the Barrett? Because they're basically the same thing, um, you know, kind of uh, semi-automatic snipers, except the Barrett does way more damage, it's way more consistent. Uh, I'm not sure in terms of ADS speed, like um, I think the Barrett's a little bit slower. But it's just way more worth it to use the Barret than the Dragonov. So I'm going to put the Dragonov at not great. Next we've got the EBR. So a lot of these um, guns are just kind of comparing them to other guns that are a part of like the same role. And determining which one is better. So I'm going to say that the EBR is basically just a slightly lower tier version of the um sks wherever that is in here i don't even know um but yeah i think it's just a slightly just worse sks in every regard 
they're both kind of like spammy or semi-auto like assault rifle looking feeling kind of things they work kind of like the fal um but the ebr isn't isn't bad or anything so i'm just gonna put it at good and i think that's all right now we've got the fal so the fal um originally you know it was pretty good uh and then it got a buff to i believe it's damage profile where it, it is just slightly stronger in every area that you hit a person so basically just an all-around damage buff this thing dominates warzone now but uh in terms of multiplayer it's definitely uh it's definitely up there it may actually even get a nerf coming soon so i'm gonna put it at very good as well because i believe it, it deserves to be there next we've got the vector this one's kind of a toss-up i'm tempted to put it in godly because this thing absolutely shreds you can get decent range out of it if you use the right attachments um, but up close this thing just absolutely melts you out of existence considering the time to kill is already very fast this thing with its uh fire rate just deletes people i used it yesterday it is just so good um however i think that still the mp5 and even maybe the mp7 kind of outshine this thing due to the fact that the mp5 can just do those ranges a lot better and still be able to perform almost equally with this thing at close range engagements so it just slightly one ups it and therefore i'm going to put this at very good as well all right we've got the scar this is a slightly questionable assault rifle again it's kind of like the ak and the galil where it's kind of one of those uh heavier harder hitting but slower assault rifles but i think both these guns do a better job at that than this does uh and i don't think there's much else to say about that so i'm just gonna put it at not great because it's just the the base version of the gun is slow and then if you end up putting attachments to make it you know have a little bit less kick or any of that kind of stuff or more ammo because it doesn't have that much ammo it ends up becoming very slow and if you end up putting too much uh ads speed stuff on it it becomes uh super jumpy in terms of recoil and you don't have very much ammo in the mag and these two just perform better than it so again what's really the point of using this if you can use those two um, and have a better time using those all right next we've got the famas um the famas has been good in this game i don't think it's been touched in terms of any buffs or nerfs it's very good i'd argue um you know bursts are interesting with the time to kill uh you can do the same thing with you know a full auto weapon of any kind but the famas manages as long as it manages to one burst people which it does but as long as a burst assault rifle is able to one burst people then it, it is considered good i'd argue because if you're not one bursting people then that just makes the time to kill drastically worse and at that point you just it's not worth using so i'm gonna put it at good i definitely think it's a viable option it's not on the level of these weapons i'd argue but it's still um it's still a viable option all right next we've got the grow um so this thing dominated warzone um for the longest time basically since it came out until its recent nerf and it's still arguably a good option but in multiplayer i don't know it's kind of just on par with a bunch of the other assault rifles like the m13 and the kilo and stuff so i think it's still deserving of a spot in the very good um category um, and if I were looking at Warzone, I may have put it up to Godly, um, but because of its nerf, I think its nerf and the fact that we're talking about multiplayer leaves it right around here. Next, we've got the HDR. Since we're strictly talking multiplayer here, the HDR is very slow, and the damage buff did give it, um, you know, it, it, it makes it very good for those long range engagements so i'm gonna have to put it at not great considering that a lot of people in this game play those smaller um type of maps like shipment shoot house rust 
you know, Cheshire Park, Kandor Hideout, all those smaller maps just because they play a lot better than the poorly designed uh, other 6v6 maps. And because of that, having a slow sniper rifle puts you at an extreme disadvantage where half the time you will end up getting shot by a full auto weapon um, and you will end up dying before you can even ADS your gun, let alone shoot. But if you're the type of person that plays, you know, those 10v10 maps like Euphrates Bridge, Ania Palace, or Ground War or whatever, it's definitely a, a decent option for you. Um, so, you know, don't count it out for anything. But um, personally, I think it's at not great since the majority of the players play those smaller, faster paced, um, you know, maps. And it's just not the best option for that. All right, next we've got the Holger 26. I'm gonna be honest. I think it's trash. Now, it got a heavy, heavy, heavy buff in uh, one of the patches during season three. I believe it was the mid-season update with a uh, hard hat and stuff. Is when it got that big buff, if I remember correctly. Basically, it got like an ADS buff to literally all of the attachments that give you ADS um, and stuff like that. But the thing is, it's still garbage because in hardcore it manages to hit marker almost all the time which just makes it completely like almost unusable in hardcore um and in core it really suffers for from the drawbacks as like if you want to make it default it's very slow and if you want to make it faster then it ends up having a lot of recoil and not too much damage or range and if you want to put more damage or range on it uh, for example, for hardcore to, you know, try and prevent those hit markers, then you end up making it extremely slow. So this is going to be the first gun to go into terrible. Uh, and I think it's about to get followed up because the Joker uh, or the Javelin, I'd argue, is the worst RPG in this game by far. It is very slow to ADS. Um, and if you're trying to shoot down streaks, like doing the challenges on this thing was painful i sat in ground war and shoot house and stuff with this thing i think two days of like 10 8 to 10 hour sessions just to get this thing gold and it was the last gun i had to get gold for my damascus um challenges and that was it was painful it's very slow to ads compared to the other ones and the fact that it shoots the rocket you know straight up and then it kind of just hovers there and then shoots it down at the streak as opposed to just going straight to the streak um, makes it just worse than the Pila it's just not very viable terrible again my opinion uh, if you like it it's probably not too bad in Warzone but uh, terrible for me now we've got the car 98 this is my favorite weapon in this game obviously I'm a sniper so that might not be the same for you guys but this is my favorite weapon. I think I have like 13,000 kills with this thing. Uh, I love it. And then plus that buff that it got. It got a major ADS buff in the uh, you know sniper patch, if I can call it that. Which was during Season 4's mid-season update. Not too long ago, even. Uh, but this thing is very, very good. I would put it in very good. I would like put it in godly. Um, but... You know, the snipers still just kind of get outclassed in this game in a lot of situations. So I think it's it's very nice and uh, very good. Next we've got, I believe this is the uh, Kilo, if I am correct. Um, and the Kilo is one of the better assault rifles. It kind of gets outclassed by the M4 a little bit. Um, but it's still good. And a lot of the assault rifles in this game are very good. So I think it's just going to go in very good. Um, and you'll end up seeing by the end of this that a lot of the guns are just going to be in these two categories. Because a lot of the full auto weapons, because of the fast time to kill, are just a very viable versus the other weapons. So a lot of them, you know, stack up very well. Um, next we got the M13. Very similar to the Kilo. Slightly faster shooting, less recoil. Uh, slightly less damage you can make it into kind of an smg and i would argue it's good but it's on the on the brink of very good it's just i think it's slightly worse than the kilo 
but it, it's still you know a very uh, viable option and I think it's on par with most of the things within this category next I believe this is the uh, shit I don't even remember my pistols uh, which one is this I believe it's the M M19 um, I think I'm just gonna put it at good without saying really that much because most of the pistols are just kind of the same if you ask me next we've got the M4 now this thing was during the beginning of the game along with the 725 just dominated the playing field um, you'd see in every lobby basically only M4s and 725s um, and this thing would just beam at close range beam across the map it would outclass snipers um, it didn't suffer any drawbacks of like being slow or anything you could put a good ammo capacity on it it had very low recoil uh, it got it ended up getting nerfed multiple times but it's still a very viable assault rifle and you still see a lot of people using it godly definitely 100 percent all right now we've got the uh the, this thing the i don't even remember the name of the lmgs all right so next we've got the m91 um this is an lmg that, that that's pretty obvious that's a pretty stupid statement actually from me but um the lmgs they're they're okay in this game they definitely hit hard uh they serve their purpose well they do what they are meant to do in a sense that like they're kind of slow but hard hitting you can spray them a lot they've got a large ammo capacity and they're very good at range so i'm gonna put this at good and probably a majority of the lmgs are gonna be at good to be honest mg34 follows that up um I would argue that this one actually probably goes in not great because it's if I remember correctly it doesn't have that much ammo in it and it just kind of feels not very good like it feels like I, I don't know how to explain it per se but it just feels like a slightly downgraded version of the other LMGs um, and feels almost like flimsy in a sense but next we've got the uh, mk2 carbine this thing is uh very fast um you know it got a movement speed buff in that sniper patch so you can sprint around with this thing very fast um it is kind of a hit marker machine but in terms of like i said before a lot i assume a majority of the population of this game that plays multiplayer plays maps like shipment shoot house blah 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 um and you're gonna want a fast kind of sniper if that's what you're gonna be doing so i believe this goes in very good as well because uh it is able to you know be quick um and if you're able to aim well you know in like the upper chest or head consistently then you can end up killing people with their full autos pretty consistently so i i think it is deserving of very good Next, I believe we have the Bruin. This is kind of recent. What, what is this, Season 3? See, I don't even remember anymore. But, um, this thing, the base version isn't that great. It's very slow. But, there is an attachment, the 60 round mags. And that attachment, that single attachment, gives you so many perks. It increases, like movement speed reload speed ads speed by like a bajillion uh and it just completely makes this weapon way better for multiplayer so if you put 60 round mags on this thing it is very good it does a good amount of damage it is able to be fast if you like use the 60 round mag and then you can add on like say attack laser or stippled grip tape or no stock um or any of that stuff so yeah it is a very good weapon Next we've got the model, uh, next we've got the MP5, this thing is, I'd argue, on par with the 725 and M4, where for a long time you'd see at least one or two people using this per lobby, and it is just kind of defined as one of those sweaty weapons, um, where 
you know, if you want to go try hard or whatever, you'd use like an M4, MP5, something like that. Uh, a lot of pro players, like in the Call of Duty League scene, uh, the majority of pro players would run M4s or MP5s. Um, so I definitely believe that it is deserving of Godly. It did get nerfed. Uh, I believe the auto rounds for it got a... I don't know if it was a damage or a range nerf, but it did get a nerf. But it's still godly, if you ask me. It still does exactly what it's supposed to do at very uh, you know high performance levels. Next, we've got the Model 680. Um, so this shotgun is a pretty good all-around shotgun. Uh, at its peak, which I believe it hasn't actually been t uh, touched by any buffs or nerfs, uh, during this entire game but at its peak it was you know it's not as good as the 725 but it definitely serves its purpose well it's got a decent amount of shots in it it's got a pretty decent range it's not too slow um, and if you play those close quarter maps like I said you're gonna do well with this shotgun um, because you know it is capable of doing that high damage in close range situations obviously it's a shotgun very good Alright, we've got the MP7 next, and this is kind of just, in my mind, like a little baby um, MP5, like a little pocket MP5, if you will. Um, it doesn't do range as well as the MP5, um, but it is a little bit more mobile, so th those are the trade-offs, I suppose. I don't think it's quite godly, because the MP5 you kind of associate with just that sweaty play style. Um, but the MP7, definitely a very, very viable weapon. One of the best SMGs behind the MP5. So I would put it at very good as well. And again, like I said earlier, you can see a lot of weapons are just going in the very good and good. Uh, and that's just the nature of this game. A lot of the weapons are very good considering the time to kill. I've mentioned it a bunch of times, but that's just how it works. Next, you've got the Odin. Now, I'd argue this is probably the worst assault rifle. It does uh, hit hard, it does have good range, it has that stupidly long suppressor, um, but overall, it's slow, kind of clunky, doesn't have a lot of rounds, shoots very slow, and it's just not very worth it. You can beam people with an M4 and have a way better time than this thing, so I'm going to actually put it at not great. Close to terrible, um, but I think it's still a little more viable than, say, the Holger. Next we've got the Origin 12 shotgun. This thing is kind of spammy and kind of, you know, it doesn't have very good range, but it, it blasts people up close. However, I think you'll have a better time with the Model 680, um, which I put up here, unless you're playing like Shipment and you put some range attachments on it so you don't get too many hit markers. But other than that, I, I don't really see like the point. So I'm going to put it at not great. Next we've got the P90. Now the P90 is kind of like a step down from the MP5 and MP7. But that doesn't mean it's bad per se. Um, it's still very good. It's got very minimal recoil. It's still mobile. The one problem you'll have is range. Which is usually the case with these SMGs aside from the MP5 really. And like the AUG. Um, but it still performs its role well. I'm going to have to put it at good because, again, it is just a slightly lower tier version of the MP7 and the MP5, but uh, definitely still a viable weapon. Next, we've got the Pila. Uh, again, if you're looking at, you know, sh I, this thing's pretty good, actually, I'd argue. It's able, its blast radius allows you to um, kill people at a pretty decent, like, splash radius pretty decent range uh if you're using it for kills on like shipment for the challenges or whatever um and for streaks it's a better version of the joker because it locks on way faster um and it just goes straight to the thing so i'm gonna have to put it at probably good i'd argue it's just kind of like the all around uh, thing you want it locks on to the streaks uh it's not too slow in terms of locking on or ADS, it's able to kill people pretty well. But yeah, next we've got the PKM. Uh, I'd argue this is probably the best LMG. 
um, however I still think it probably deserves to be in good because a lot of the you know ARs still outclass the slowness of the LMGs and the Bruin is just better than this thing so I'm just gonna put it in good it is better than this LMG I'd argue um, but it is still just in the good category and also none of these are in particular order within the good category it's just how I've gone through them um, but yeah next we've got the bison this thing is kind of like a hip uh, hit marker machine originally I called it the tissue paper shooter um, which you know speaks for itself it kind of does low damage it shoots pretty fast it's pretty mobile but um, in hardcore this thing is a beast because you are able to make it very fast with the like no stock attachment the short barrel um, the tack laser all that and you're able to give it 84 round mags which allows you to just spray in hardcore f constantly and be able to use it really easy so it's a really easy to pick up weapon i'd say uh and i'd have to put it in good as well i think uh, i think it's probably equal with the p90 in terms of core but in hardcore it's definitely better than the p90 if you ask me next we've got the r90 shotgun this i actually had a pretty good time with this shotgun a lot of the time People don't seem to like it as much, um, but I don't really know under or understand why. Um, it's a pretty good shotgun. I consider it to be a better version of the Origin 12, which we put out not great. So I believe it should go into good. Um, it's kind of one of the spammier ones, kind of like the Origin, not as fast, but faster than the Model 680 or the, you know, 725. Considering you only get two rounds with the 725, um, so it's good. Um, yeah, it's good. Next, we've got the SA-87. This thing's terrible, all right? And here's why. Hardcore gets constant hit markers. I've mentioned this in tons of videos before. Uh, I used it in a video where I basically just complained for the entire video about how much it sucks. But it's an LMG that is designed to be kind of like leaning towards the AR category, if you understand what I mean. It's uh, got a, a little bit lower round mags, and it's uh, a little bit more mobile than the other LMGs. But the way it works, it just suffers from the downsides of the LMGs. So even with its ADS attachments, it's still pretty slow. Um, and it still doesn't have the damage output of the LMGs. So it just kind of, you know, is the worst of both worlds, which is an interesting way to put it, but... Uh, and in hardcore this thing manages to hit marker just like the holder basically the same basically the same thing Next we've got the Renetti. This thing is interesting When the burst mod came out, it was really overpowered. Everyone was running those uh, akimbo um, Burst Renetti's as their secondary and I think it was around the time that the snake shots got nerfed So it was kind of like the replacement snake shots. They ended up um, nerfing it pretty fast and pretty hard um because so many people were using it but i think it still deserves to be very good the single burst renetti is still very viable the dual burst renetti is not so much but it considering its past and where it is still after that nerf i believe it's very good probably the only pistol deserving of this category next we've got the riot shield um i guess it serves its purpose well because you can protect yourself or whatever. Um, the two-shot melee makes sense for it, but doesn't end up working out very well um, in practice. So I'm going to put it at not great, considering it's hard to get within range of people with a melee. And, you know, when you're running with this thing, you're a lot slower than with a knife, and you're exposed. Plus, you need those two hits after you get to the person. So chances are, unless you're like creeping around like a little rat, uh, only holding out the shield, which actually a lot of people do, then you're probably not going to make it to your target. You're probably going to get beamed by like an M4 or an MP5, and you're probably going to die a lot. So that's why it's going to go at not great. All right, next we've got the RPG. This thing is very, very good at killing people. Um, and in terms of shooting streaks, it's actually a little bit annoying to be able to aim it at things that are moving a lot, like UAVs, where it's moving across the sky. 
so I'm gonna put it at good but it's basically for the opposite reason as the Pila the Pila is mostly good for its streak shooting potential whereas the RPG is good for its killing potential um, so next we've got the Rytec AMR or the Barrett 50 cal this thing is quite consistent it basically does what the Barrett is supposed to do it's a little bit slower a little bit clunkier and you don't get that much ammo but the, the good part of that is that you know the ADS speed is not too terrible um, it is super consistent you're able to like one shot people and like the waste sometimes so it, it's one shot potential is very good um, and it's just a overall pretty good feeling gun so I think it deserves to be in the very good who knows if we'll get a nerf and also if you're talking warzone this thing is not good at all in warzone it's probably one of these two in warzone because it doesn't actually one shot to the head which is terrible because if you are shooting some guy from super far away and you end up hitting them in the head you deserve to have that kill um that's the whole point of sniping that's the whole satisfaction of sniping the one shotting of people especially in warzone it's a lot more worth it per kill but uh that thing just isn't able to do it but in multiplayer it is very good um so yeah i just realized something i put the i have this is the ram 7 and that's the a sa87 all right ram 7 um i would put it at good it's almost in, on par with very good, but I think the Grau and the Kilo are just kind of slightly better than it. Uh, now we can take the SA-87 and put it in terrible where it belongs. Sorry, Ram 7, my bad. Um, next, we've got the SKS. So I believe I put the EBR in... Where did I put the EBR? I'm losing track. There's so many guns. I, yeah, it's right here in good. Um, I believe the SKS probably deserves to be in very good. Barely barely it's just slightly better than the ebr you could argue either one of these but uh i'm gonna put it in very good i haven't actually used it that much so my uh my opinion on it might be a little bit uh like wrong i mean it's my opinion but it might be wrong anyways we've got the strella next i think this thing is not great the splash damage on this thing is absolute potato um you can end up hit markering people with the explosive uh, shot from basically right at their feet. Um, so that makes it terrible for that. It's kind of annoying to aim the trajectory for streaks like the UAVs that are moving because it has like this weird arc when you shoot it. So it's just kind of all around annoying. Um, so I'm going to put it on not great and I think that's probably fair. Next we've got the Striker 45 or the UMP 45. This thing is kind of like one of the heavier SMGs where it's meant to do a little more damage but be a little less mobile. I think this thing is good because you're gonna end up getting more out of your experience with the MP7 and the MP5. Obviously they are a lot better for you know what you're using them for. Uh, the Striker is a good alternative i would say you know it, it does those close range engagements almost as good as the mp7 is and the mp5 um but just overall i believe the mp5 and the mp7 are better uh, but this thing is definitely good all right we're coming up we're approaching the end here so next we've got the uzi this thing isn't bad also, it has those new uh, rounds, like magazines. Well, I, they're not very new, but I don't even have them. So I'm not sure if that makes much of a difference. But I'm going to put it at not great. Because the P90 is just kind of better. Uh, the Uzi, I think, is supposed to be able to do a little more damage uh, compared to the other SMGs. But in, it just doesn't actually do that, really. So the P90 and the Bison just end up doing a better job. And then obviously the MP7 and the MP5 outclass it by far. So it's not great. But it's it, it exists. It does exist. 
All right, next we've got the VLK Rogue. This thing acts like the Origin 12 shotgun. It's one of the spammier ones. However, I think this thing deserves to be in terrible. And the reasoning for that is in hardcore, you get a lot of hit markers with it. Uh, it does not have a good range at all. Um, so, you know, you, it doesn't have a good magazine size either. Uh, I believe it's like six. Um, it ends up hit markering quite a bit. It doesn't have good range. It doesn't have good attachments for range. And it, even if you put all those range attachments, like a choke or whatever that is, any of that stuff, it ends up being actually kind of terrible at close range because you can end up missing if if you like shoot half their body with the thing, it ends up not hitting because you've made the pellet spread way tighter. Um, so it's just kind of you. you it depends how you want to use it. Um, but it's it's kind of eh, eh. Just what's the point? All right, and last we've got the X16. Don't need to say much. Just good. It's kind of on par with the other pistols here. These three are all similar, if you ask me. But yeah, that's my tier list. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, if there's anything that you think uh, it should be changed or uh, anything you disagree with, please let me know in the comment section below. I'm curious to see what your your opinions are. Um, but yeah, that's that's gonna do it for this video. Do hope you guys enjoyed. Leave a like if you did. Subscribe if you're new. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.